Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Streets of New Capenna, spoiler season! has not arrived just yet. Uh, technically, this is the week before spoiler season. Spoiler season starts on April 7th, so next Thursday, but we are getting some early spoilers still because, yeah, spoiler seasons are just kind of up in the air all the time, I guess. But I'm not complaining. Or am I? Anyways, yesterday we saw a brand new exciting charm with Maestro's Charm, and yes, that means that there is going to be a charm cycle in this set, and... Don't go check out that episode until you watch this episode on the brand new charm, Obscura Charm. So is this brand new Esper Charm even more powerful than Maestro's Charm? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So Obscura Charm is an instant that costs white, blue, black, and it says choose one. Return target multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Counter target instant or sorcery spell or destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. There is a ton of potential value and a lot of flexibility packed into this three mana instant speed spell. And yeah, again, instant speed. So we've got instant speed reanimation. Again, if you've got a multicolored permanent in your graveyard with mana value three or less, you can get it back at instant speed. It comes into play tapped, but still three mana to reanimate something. That's really great. Obviously, being able to counter an instant or sorcery spell can be absolutely crucial as well. Typically, when you're countering things, the non-creature spells are the ones that you want to focus on for the most part, or at least I should say most decks do, which is why, you know, negate is more popular than whatever negate's counterpart is, which it's escaping me at this point. Regardless, essence scatter, that's it. Yeah, no one plays that. Countering instants and sorceries, very crucial in Commander, and obviously that third mode, being able to destroy a creature or planeswalker, is huge. Now you are restricted to mana value 3 or less, and we'll talk about the breakdown of most popular creatures out there, and what percentage of them have mana value 3 or less, or which ones are more, etc, etc, etc. Regardless, we are to kind of group these different choices. We are getting either value, you know, getting something back from our graveyard, or a piece of control, you know, either countering something or destroying a creature or planeswalker. Of course, there are limitations on each of these options, but they do hit some pretty crucial things. So for that first part, which again is to return target multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, there are a good amount of options out there and a good amount of targets for that spell. I mean, just doing a quick scryfall search, we see that, you know, there is apparently 905 cards that meet this requirement. And obviously, if you just scroll through that list, you know, by sorting by EDH rack rank, you can see that there are a lot of, you know, great cards out there that this can hit. Now, I do think that out of the three modes, this one is obviously the most specific. And, you know, there might even be some decks out there that might have a couple of things that it can hit, but it's mostly in for the other two options. That being said, obviously being able to get back some of these permanents can provide you a lot of value, and again, there really aren't many instant speed reanimation spells out there. So for just 3 mana, being able to bring something back can be very surprising, and can also be game changing. Now, as for that last option, which again is destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value 3 or less, I just went on to Scryfall again to try to break down, okay, what creatures out there, you know, meet that requirement? What planeswalkers out there meet that requirement? How often are you going to run into an issue where you can't destroy something that you might want to destroy? So again, even if you just take a glance at this image, you know, which is sorted by EDH rec rank by creature, you see that, well, out of these, you know, first eight that you just see on the screen, only one of them doesn't meet that requirement, which is Sad Robot. But even just trying to get a gauge, you know, going through this entire page, you know, the top 60 creatures in Commander, 42 of them have a mana value of 3 or less, which is 70% of those creatures. 
Now, obviously, that is a general number, and it's not going to apply to all situations. I mean, if you're going up against, say, Dragon Tribal, obviously, it's going to have a higher converted mana cost than most decks. But for the most part, yeah, around 70% of creatures or so are probably going to be, you know, taken out by this spell. Or again, I should say, a rough estimation based on these numbers. And again, this can also get rid of Planeswalkers too, with the exact same limitation of mana value 3 or less. But still, let's talk about numbers when it comes to Planeswalkers. Now, as you can see, you know, even just with this first image of the top 8 Planeswalkers that are used in Commander, it's not the, you know, same case as it is with Creatures. Just from what we see on this screen, it looks like we've got Narset, Ashiok, and Oko as the only three that actually meet that requirement. And with my super scientific method of, you know, looking at the top 60 cards on this screen, I have found that 15 out of the 60 actually meet the requirement, which again is just 25%. Obviously, that makes sense as the vast majority of Planeswalkers out there are basically 3 mana or higher. Now, obviously, there's a couple like, you know, Tybalt, the Fiend Blooded, which is 2, but, but yeah, creatures have a, a lower cost in general, you know, on the lower end. So whereas you might be hitting around 70% of creatures with this spell, you can expect to only hit about 25% of Planeswalkers with this same spell. Still a solid removal option, though, in a lot of situations, especially with creatures, and it's just nice when it happens to hit Planeswalkers, too. That being said, though, now let's compare Obscure Charm to the original Esper Charm and see how it stacks up. Again, Obscure Charm is providing value with that reanimation, as well as some control with that countering and some removal with destroying a creature or planeswalker, again with that restriction. The original Esper Charm is an instant with the exact same cost, and it also says choose one destroy target enchantment, draw two cards, or target player discards two cards. So, Esper Charm also provides removal, destroying an enchantment. Again, it's not limited based on, you know, mana value, but it is limited to just enchantments, whereas Obscura is limited to creatures or planeswalkers with that mana value restriction. This one provides you a card advantage option, though, by allowing you to draw two cards, or a card disadvantage option by having another player discard two. So, it provides value as well as removal, but the main difference between these two is that this one makes someone discard, whereas the other one allows you to counter an instant or sorcery. Both are fantastic cards, though. I mean, the original Esper Charm, I believe, sees play in 4% of eligible decks, and yeah, I mean, it, it's a great card and a lot of Esper decks out there. That being said, that target player discards two cards is probably the worst out of all these options, and yeah, having that essentially replaced with something that can counter a spell is great. Though again, do keep in mind that, you know, drawing two cards is guaranteed value, whereas that Obscura Charm's first option of being able to bring something back and reanimate it it has to be just a multicolored permanent melee value 3 or less, and there are certain decks out there that might not have that option, or might not revolve around the graveyard, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, each are good in their own ways, but with their own limitations. Will Obscura Charm end up seeing more play than Esper Charm? I am really not sure, only time will tell. What I can tell you though, and I'm pretty positive on this, is that it's going to see more play than the other charm in Esper with Dromar's Charm. Of course, it is also an instant that costs the exact same amount and says choose one, you gain 5 life or counter target spell, or target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. So, gaining 5 life is probably the worst option out of anything we've talked about so far. Yeah, that, that's just not all that great, especially for a 3 mana spell, that's kind of a waste. Being able to counter any spell though is obviously superior, and it makes up for a lot of that, you know, missed value from the gaining 5 life. But the last option of giving a creature minus two, minus two until end of turn is pretty specific, and it's only going to get rid of a, you know, pretty small population of creatures out there. Obviously, you're going to be able to destroy a lot more things with Obscura Charm, you know, being creatures or Planeswalkers with mana value three or less. And yeah, I, I mean, that's just superior in that way. So I definitely think it's pretty much guaranteed that Obscura Charm is going to see more play than Dromar's Charm. Now, when it comes to commanders that might want Obscura Charm, well, uh, of course, and I mentioned this yesterday about the other charm, Ramos. Ramos loves charms. Ramos has, whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one counter on it for each of its colors, and by removing five colors, you get double Wooburg. So, basically, when you cast efficient spells that are a lot of colors, like, you know, the charms, which are three mana spells that have three colors, you get a lot of counters on Ramos, and you can use those counters effectively to make a lot of mana. Regardless, outside of Ramos loving charms, of course, there are other commanders that might want this as well. One that did come to my mind was Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways, a 2-3 human wizard for white, blue, black. It has whenever one of our creature cards upon your graveyard from anywhere venture in the dungeon, this ability triggers only once each turn. And whenever you complete a dungeon return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
So first off, this commander does meet that first requirement. It is a three mana creature. So if you decide to get it into your graveyard, you can get it back with that spell. On top of that, obviously with a Sephiroth deck, you might have other options of creatures to get out of your graveyard, and you very well might have some multicolored creatures that meet that requirement as well, being three or less mana. So for a commander that's looking to fill its graveyard with creatures, this can be a good option. You know, on top of having the flexibility of being a counterspell and removal. And speaking of filling your graveyard, next up, how about Verena Lich Queen? Verena is a 4-4 zombie wizard that says whenever you attack with one or more zombies, draw that many cards and discard that many cards, you gain that much life. So you can fill your graveyard with Verena, and yeah, a lot of zombies tend to be very low to the ground, and there are some fantastic multicolor zombies that meet that requirement of having a mana value of 3 or less, so have fun reanimating them. Or if you happen to have another multicolor permanent that meets those requirements as well, again, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a creature, it could be a planeswalker, or enchantment, or an artifact that meets that requirement too. And finally, since this is a 3 mana spell, which again is odd, let's talk about Yennet. Yennet is a 3-5 Flying Vigilant Menace Sphinx that costs 2 white, blue, black. Yennet has, whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If that card's converted mana cost is odd, you may cast out paying its mana cost, otherwise draw a card. So again, if Yennet hits this odd spell at the top of your library, you can cast it for free. And again, it's a very flexible card that can help you out in a good amount of situations. So yeah, definitely one to consider. But overall, so far out of this set, we have seen Maestro's Charm, you know, the Grixis Charm, as well as Obscure Charm, the Esper Charm. We are still waiting on the new versions, though, of the charms like Naya Charm, Jun Charm, and Bant Charm. The first two that we've seen have been very solid with a good amount of flexibility that can help out in a lot of situations, so we will see just how good the new charms are going to be. So for more charm spoilers, and, and of course just, you know, more actual spoilers when they do come out next week, make sure you stay tuned to this channel. If I had to venture a guess, I would say that we are getting one charm on each day, you know, because, you know, there are, there are going to be five charms in this set, um, and uh, the first charm uh, came out yesterday, which was Monday. And the second one came out today was Tuesday, so expect one on Wednesday, then Thursday, then Friday. But I could be wrong, so don't hold me to that. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again, and have a good one.